morning everybody and thanks for watching so I'm gonna finish up uh, Colossians just pulling a few things out of it and then talking about the acronym Jill that um, I have used recently but in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 Paul says, Beware that no one shall be despoiling you through philosophy and empty seduction. So we get these kind of words and people putting forth their philosophy and certain thoughts and they endlessly come up with what they think is support for these philosophies and these thoughts. And a lot of times these philosophies and thoughts can, if we heed them, do damage to what we believe. And I think that's sometimes where we get agitated is because when we hear things that go contrary to our beliefs and then we listen to something or someone explain them for so long, that that can be frustrating. But on top of that, it could bring people away from the truth and that's why Paul warns against it but then Paul goes back into how not to be despoiled through philosophy and empty seduction so he says that in verse 8 in accord with human tradition in accord with the elements of the world and not in accord with Christ that's how people lay out this philosophy this empty seduction they do it in accord with human tradition they do it in accord with the elements of the world and not in accord with Christ so how do you get away from this empty seduction this philosophy or these philosophies that people throw out there well you stay focused and be in accord with Christ that's how you do it and Paul explains that in him the entire complement of the deity is dwelling bodily. And you are complete in him. So many people in their philosophies will say that we're not complete in Christ. We have to do this, that, and the other. No. Paul says to get away from that, you know that you are complete in him. And the fullness, the entire complement of the deity, God, is dwelling bodily in Christ. Not saying that Christ is God, but Christ has all the attributes in the in the form of a located human. That he does and represents all the things that God does and represents. To the point if we're doing it to Jesus we're doing it to God if we're doing it for Jesus we're doing it for God that when God saves the world he does it through the death for sin the entombment and resurrection of Jesus Christ so Christ now verse 12 13 being entombed together with him in baptism so again Paul is going on now talking about how you get away from these empty seductions and these philosophies understanding that being entombed together with him in baptism in whom you were roused together also through faith in the operation of God who rouses him from among the dead you also being dead to the offenses and the uncircumcision of your flesh he vivifies us together jointly with him. So Paul explains how we get away from this seduction of philosophy. We understand that we were baptized with Christ when he died. And that's our baptism over 2,000 years ago. See, in baptism, when people get baptized in church today, they try to bring Christ to them oh I'm baptized now now Christ can come in and save me that's not baptism that's talked about here by Paul baptism is where 
Jesus Christ brought us to him. That's baptism. When Jesus Christ died, he brought us to him to die with him, to be dead with him. And then by the operation of faith in God, to be roused with him as well. That's baptism. Identifying with Jesus Christ's death. Jesus Christ, when he died over 2,000 years ago, he brought us, he brought humanity with him into that death. And then when he was roused, they were roused. That's why Paul says he vivifies us together jointly with him. Vivified, made alive beyond the touch of death. And it's done jointly with him. See, another empty seduction uh, philosophy of religion based on human tradition is that we are raised apart from Christ based on decisions that we make. Do we make a faith decision? Did we follow this rule or that rule? Did we get water baptized? Did we go to church every day? Do we not commit certain sins. You can commit these sins, not these, but if you commit any sins, whatever the rules are, it's separate for each human being. So if you did this, then you're in. If you didn't do that, then you're out. That's not jointly with Christ. That's separate from Christ. Christ did something, and then separate from Christ, you have to do something to earn that. That's all religion teaches. Every single religion teaches that in some form or another but that's human tradition and empty seduction because here Paul says he vivifies us together jointly with him we're connected with him we're roused because Jesus Christ was roused we died because Jesus Christ died we died with him and we roused with him that's jointly that's not separately See, when you tag on that separately, now you can put in all the human tradition and the rules and the empty seduction and the philosophies that can explain what you need to do in order to be separate from everybody else and achieve Christ. When it's Christ that achieves salvation for you. I mean, baptism is a perfect example. People think that they get baptized in church, that they are doing something in order to be saved, apart from Christ. Where the truth is, Christ baptized all humanity jointly with him. He brought all humanity. He did it into his death, into his entombment, and then into his rousing, into his resurrection. That's bringing all humanity with him jointly so that we all die with him and we all raise with him. But the empty seductions, the philosophy tries to separate that jointly and say that you have to do it. You have to get yourself baptized and if you get baptized, then you're saved. If that person doesn't get baptized, then they're not saved. So that's not jointly anymore. It's what you do that achieves Christ. And you can fill in whatever you want for baptism there. You can fill in following the law. You can fill in having faith. You can fill in anything that you think separates you from everybody else. Whatever that seduction, whatever that philosophy is, it denies the jointly and it denies the baptism that truly saves us that Paul is talking about here. So Paul saying in 14 and 15, erasing the handwriting of the decrees against us, which was hostile to us and has taken it away out of the mist, nailing it to the cross stripping off the sovereignties and authorities with boldness he makes a show of them triumphing over them in it so 
everything is hid together in Christ. Paul goes on in chapter 3, verses 2 through 4. Starting in verse 2, be disposed to that which is above, not to that on the earth, for you died and your life is hid together with Christ in God. Whenever Christ our life should be manifested, then you also shall be manifested together with him in glory. So everything we are is tied together with Christ. Paul says our, we're hid in Christ. So when he is manifested in glory, we will be manifested in glory. That's how closely connected we are to Christ. And that's really the common theme that Paul that Paul is talking about in Colossians and especially in chapter 2 and chapter 3 here is that we don't do anything separate from Christ nothing is accomplished separate from Christ as he said in verse 13 he vivifies us together jointly with him everything that is done is because we are in Christ it is done by Christ and he takes us along with him there's nothing done that's separate that's religion every every religion in the world is man's attempt to bridge the gap in order to get to God it's not jointly there's no religion that is jointly receiving these gifts jointly with Christ it's the religion doing things to get to Christ to impress Christ to be worthy of Christ. Well here Paul is saying all the worthiness we have and everything we have is tied with Christ. So that everything we are is in Christ. So if Christ goes up, we go up. If Christ goes down, we go down. If Christ goes to the left or the right, we go to the left or the right. Not because we're working to go left or up or down or to the right but because we go with him. And that, again, is the picture of baptism. Baptism is Jesus Christ taking us. And he took all humanity. And I was going to get to my Jill acronym here of knowing exactly what has been done for us by knowing exactly what has been done for every human and then understanding what additional perks we have in the body of Christ but I'm going to get into that in my next video but to understand baptism that Jesus Christ jointly saves us means when he went into that grave when he was on the cross and went into that grave it's like a bubble he took all of humanity inside him and took all humanity into the grave so that all humanity died with him. That's what Paul's talking about here. That we died with him. Not separate from him. We don't go somewhere and get baptized in the year 2024 and say, okay, now I died with Christ. No, you died with Christ when Christ brought you to him on that cross. And yes, it doesn't matter that you were born yet. You are still dying in Adam. And every creature that's dying in Adam, through whom God created all creation, through Jesus Christ, had you in mind in all creation. He gathered you, us believers, all humanity, unbelievers included, grabbed us and brought us down with him to the grave, to death, to no conscious existence. And because Christ had faith in his God that he would raise him from the dead, he went to that grave and brought us with him into death. So that's how we die. We die in him with him and then God resurrected Jesus from the dead 
without the sin, without the death, without the old humanity, but with us. So we went into death with him, and he held on to us when we were resurrected. And the same, all creation that died with him are resurrected with him. So everything that we have is in him. So those of us that have been chosen for a special salvation, in 1 Timothy 4.10, God is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. The especially, the special believers just have been given a realization of what Christ Jesus has done. So they get in early in order to work with Christ to bring everyone else to a realization of what Christ has done for them. But as Paul explains here, it's all done jointly in him, in Christ, in Christ bringing us to death and in Christ rousing us from the dead. There's nothing we do separately and there's nothing that any other human being does separately. It's all done in Christ. And anything that tries to separate that jointness is empty seduction, human philosophy based on the traditions of man. And that is what Paul is speaking against here. Thanks for watching. <clears throat>